All right, students, let's get down to it. We have some important information to go over. Pete Poston contacted me very shortly after the recent video I did about the pebbles that he observed in the boot of George Mallory that's at the Royal Geographical Society in London. And Pete said, I might not have properly shed light on the information that he was conveying to me. So let's look at it this way. I was talking to a full-fledged scientist scientist talking to a creative type and I was taking all the information and mushing it all together. So I'm going to let Pete address specifically what these pebbles might tell us about June 8th, 1924, where George Mallory and Sandy Irvin were making their fateful bid for the summit of Mount Everest. Pete is a PhD in analytical chemistry, and what he does is he uses chemical instrumentation, in this instance, as he says, to interrogate an example from the boot. That's what he wants to do with the RGS, and along with Bob Edwards, who I've spoken about many times on this channel, an author about the mystery of Mallory and Irvin, they have both been very interested in trying to get that sample from the RGFs to do extensive examinations of those pebbles. Now let's be clear, if these pebbles are found to be in accordance with what might be found near the summit, you still can't say the summit. Now it's close, but there is only snow at the summit of Mount Everest. There might be something, oh, 10 meters away, but it's not literally the summit. This whole summit rock thing with George Mallory, it's extremely interesting and certainly viable and something to consider, but there's no proof if we found rocks in Mallory's pocket in 1999, even if they matched what Pete is going to talk about today, it would not be definitive proof. But we'll get back into that a little bit later. Pete had seen a photo of the boot of Mallory in the early 2000s. And as a scientist, a guy who's always dissecting things, he saw the gash on the boot and he became fascinated by thinking, gosh, I wonder if there are any rocks in there that we could research. And so in 2007, he had Jamie McGinnis, my friend and a friend of Everest Mystery, get rock samples from along the ridge on his way to the summit. And the two that we're going to talk about today are from Mushroom Rock and one very close to the summit. Now here's a picture of the Northeast Ridge and here's where Mushroom Rock is and then of course here's where the summit is and those are the two rocks that Jamie brought down for Pete to do his research of. So let's jump to that interview with Pete as he talks about analyzing these rocks. I've shortened the interview for a digestible chunk and if you want to go the next cut deeper I'll direct you to an article on Pete's website Everest 1924 where you can just dissect every bit of minutia that he goes into. He's a scientist. What do you want? So let's jump into that and I'll check back in and I might need to hold a hand or two because he reveals in this interview some things that kind of take down a notch the idea of a rock on the summit being so much different from a rock farther down the ridge. So here's that chat with Pete from his PowerPoint presentation. Here is the boot at RGS, and with the circle and the arrow, these are two little chunks of gray band rocks. And that was the other thing that I must not have been clear about. I'm not saying these are summit rocks. I'm saying these are gray band rocks. And the summit consists of those all the way down to the first step. Here's the one that's on the toe, stuck in the weld of the boot right there. Mm. And the scale's an eighth of an inch, so it's relatively small, about an eighth of an inch in, in size. And then here is the gash that's on the side. Everything from the oval to the left, that's been scraped pretty clean. Here is um, an enlargement of the second little piece of gray band rock that you can find inside the, the oval right there. I got better lighting on this picture, so that region there you can see on the left front of the of the boot it's been, been all ripped in there mm -hmm. and and then these are my two samples of the rocks one from the mushroom rock on the left and then the summit rock on the right and so these are the samples that i'm zapping so that was back in 
2007 when I got the rocks, and then it wasn't until 2009 that I actually was able to perform the analysis here. And so this picture right here, it's from a paper and it's all quoted down at the bottom here. But these are the rocks that compose the, um, the gray band. So all the way from the summit down, following it to the left, you get to um, what's called a thrombolite layer. That's only a word that geologists can come up with. And so within the gray bands, there are like sub bands within that. And this is one of them. And it kind of has a little yellowish hue. And this has been discussed before as, well, this would be very, very, you know, uh, revealing about, about where they were, or at least where that little rock was that was found. Or in the region below is following, we know that that's going to just be covered with scree and all the rocks that the um, mountain is uh, the mountain consists of above where George Mallory is. And so if you follow his fall line up, that's um, where I first thought, well, you know, I expect there to be some yellow band rocks in there. If that's indeed where he slipped and that's indeed where the rock came from. And so I was stunned that it was actually gray band. But still, again, it, it doesn't prove anything when you're sliding over those scree slopes at the bottom of there where he ended up of course it could have been covered in snow but i don't think so since he was able to stop there here is the the route going up the ridge and here's the first step and that's where the gray band starts at any rate all the way up to the summit just to illustrate that there are gray rocks everywhere no doubt hmm. including down where mallory was was sliding so that's why you know Shoot, I can't, I can't claim that they came from the summit, <laughs> and um, you know he, it remained in his boot up to and including the the accidents. It's just much more likely that he skidded to to, to a stop there. This uh, SCM EDX at the top of the the title at the top there. That just means that you're using what's called scanning electron microscopy and. It's, it's like any kind of microscope, but it, it uses different techniques to image. And the EDX part just means that I'm illuminating the sample with x-rays and looking at what is uh, coming off. So that, that's the mushroom rock sample. And then down here, this is summit sample. And, you know, you can see that morphologically there's considerable difference. And the pictures at the bottom you can see that there's a lot of busted up stuff. It looks like there's a bunch of busted up shells in this limestone. And I, I took five samples of each and I just kind of moved the, the beam, the electron beam around so that I got some data. But each one of these bars corresponds to a different element. See that at the bottom of the graph there. So we got carbon and oxygen and sodium and so on. Then uh, we see some magnesium as well, a little bit of aluminum, silicon. Um, and then on the right there, we see potassium. And then I didn't put it on the graph, but there's a big, huge calcium peak there as well. So calcium and carbon and oxygen makes car calcium carbonate. And so that's limestone. And the um, same data from the summit rock, here's sort of a, this was only a magnification of 5,000. But coming over here, this is about 11,000, as I recall. So you can see a little bit better mm -hmm. that this is quite um, irregular mm -hmm. compared to the mushroom rock. And so if we compare these eye glazing spectra right here, you can see that there's considerable fluctuations in the, uh, the signal that's occurring in the, in the center of the graph. And I think that's because we're looking at these shattered fossil shells and that scattering light in a non-reproducible way. And so that, that's why, you know, you can't really say based upon the elemental composition that, well, I, I can't tell the difference. Even if the rocks got embedded as a boot or in a fall in the gray band, I, I can't tell you where mm -hmm. in the gray band it is because the summit and the mushroom rock look a lot alike. So I hope, I hope that that kind of makes sense. You know, theoretically, let's just say he picked up a rock like the size of the, the summit rock that Jamie got you at yes. Mushroom Rock. Let's just say he's like, well, I'm going to pick up a rock from my high point and he put it in his pocket. Right. If he were to do that, 
that's that wouldn't be proof it was a summit rock because you're saying that the gray band or that gray section is much further down on the mountain theoretically where we might where odell might have seen him even correct yeah what what really is um in this case more useful and uh bob Ed edwards talks a little bit about that and the um difference morphologically between them is those shattered shells that might be more useful in terms of identifying where those little bits came from and then this is jake's picture from back in 99 and look at all the different rocks that oh, are yeah. around there and you know you can see what looks like mainly gray stuff but there's a little bit of yellow like mm -hmm. bottom right there's kind of some yellow looking stuff and he's also in a his body's in a totally different formation, a bunch of metamorphic rocks below mm -hmm. the yellow bit. So that, that's why I included this. Yeah, Just very important. So while there is something to be learned from the pebbles in Mallory's boot, and we hope that the RGS will provide an opportunity for Bob Edwards or Pete Poston to do that interrogation of the samples, I just want to kind of put it in some kind of perspective, let's say Mallory and Irvin are going up the mountain and we know they got into trouble because they didn't make it. If Mallory got to his high point, theoretically, he would take a rock sample from whatever high point that was because you don't plan on dying. However, if he was in dire straits and dying and about to die, my gut tells me that the last thing on his mind would be collecting a summit rock. I guess we're going to have to wait to find Sandy Irvin's remains to see if any summit rocks are with him. In 1999, when I was there, my high point was Camp 6, the high camp, and I grabbed a bunch of rocks from that area, still below the gray band area, and I brought several of these home. This is yellow band rock. Would Mallory have done the same thing? My gut tells me if he was in dire straits and fighting for his life, the last thing on his mind would be to grab a rock and stuff it in his pocket. But given what Pete said about the vast section covered by this gray limestone rock from down near the first step all the way up to the summit, and I'll cut back to that photograph, let's just say one of those rocks is found in Irvin's pocket it won't prove anything. It might just prove a high point somewhere along the ridge in the vicinity of where Noel O'Dell saw them at 12.50 in the afternoon on June 8th. I think the deep dive into the mystery of Mallory and Irvin is an amazing one. I love the community that it's brought together, even though there is some divisiveness on it and some people become highly critical of those who believe alternate versions or alternate scenarios. I welcome all the research that's being done, and I think it's an amazing thing that a hundred years later, people still show so much interest in what happened to George Mallory and Sandy Irvin on June 8th, 1924. It's a fascinating mystery that tells us a lot about ourselves because it makes us really reach deep inside and say, gosh, these guys were going for it. They were doing something that had never been done before, and I think their story is an inspiration to many, many people around the world, and that this mystery is alive and on fire right now is really inspiring. So keep on sleuthing, go after it, and in the meantime, do a good deed. Don't ask for anything in return. Make the world a better place one tiny step at a time. Peace be with you.